the seven churches. Thank you. Thank you. We're not studying the seven churches just for the sake of it. You can't study the book of Revelation without looking at the seven churches first. That's why when, when the Bible puts something in order, I mean, there's a reason why, amen? So I want you to go to James chapter one. You, you have, I want you to follow me in these scriptures. I'm going to talk real quick about the power, write this down, the power of self-deception. The power, why? Because this loudly seeing, this loudly seeing church was self-deceived. And you can be the strongest believer in the world and still be deceived. Self-deceive, especially. So, uh, James chapter 1, we're going to go to verse, uh, you know me, I like to go a little before, uh, not back before. Let's go to verse 14. And this is the, the Apostle James, who was also the brother of Jesus, and also one of the disciples of our Lord. Amen? So, when you have it, say amen. If you don't, say oh me. Oh, me. Take the person next to you. Amen. Uh, thank you, Doug, for, for the song. Okay, so you have, so verse uh, 14, but each one is tempted. Well, matter of fact, let's go to verse, let's go to verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation because deception is going to come to tempt you. Make a note of that. When deception comes, it comes to tempt you as well. So blessed is the man who, who endures temptation for when he has, uh, when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let's keep going. Let no one say when he is tempted, this is very important, I'm not tempted by God, but God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. We'll have to talk some other time about that. I'm just trying to lay the foundation. But each one is tempted, here's the, here's the one you'll see, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away of his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Here's the verse here. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother. Who's he talking here to? Which means if, he, if, if the Lord wrote this over 2,000 some years ago, that, that applies to us because he's talking to the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Which means that doesn't matter how strong you think you are in the Lord, that uh, the, we can have the capacity if we don't watch ourselves to allow to be. And write this down: the worst deception is self-deception. We're going to talk about that because the Church of Laodicea was self-deceived. Okay. So, do not be deceived. By the way, this is the command. It's a verb, do not be deceived, which means we have to expect the enemy to come, especially in the end times when Jesus said in the end, the, when he started giving those, remember the 22 end time signs? By the way, if you haven't, uh, those that didn't receive the 101 uh, end time prophecies, I had 10, made 10 more copies for those, only for those that didn't receive it. So don't double dip me, okay? If you don't, if you have it, don't take one. I only made 10. Double dip, okay? <laughs> Well, here you can have it. No, 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 no. Oh, she's gonna send it to me. Oh, excuse me. Okay. That way, we my staff are uh, uh, work into working. I love it. We have a plan. We have a plan. <laughs> so it means do not be. Which means it's a command from the Lord. Do not be deceived. Which means that if we don't guard, especially in the end times, when we're getting to that place where the God's clock is moving. You know, let me tell you something. Uh, I believe that we live in what I call compression of time. God is compressing the times. What took the church 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 50 years ago to accomplish, now in my book, is I think it's happening in months. That's how fast things are happening. Which means that we got to get in the bandwagon along with the clock, with the clock of God. And, and to me, those signs are nothing but the clock of God. It's ticking on the hour on the hour. But the Bible says that one day is like a, a thousand and a thousand years. So although he, although he kept all of these prophets, these men of God wrote about that the Lord's coming soon. You know, according to us, soon means like right around the corner. But that means in, in God's eyes, it is soon. <laughs> Sometimes we ask God for something. We believe God speaks to us about something. It's through, well, it can be through the word of God or through a counsel or through a prophetic word. 
And you think, oh my God, I'm gonna, you know, let's say you get a call to go to China. By the way, I'm going to India April 23rd. We're keeping prayer. I'm going to the place where nobody wants to go, the persecuted part of India, North India. I just got my notice about the visa. Uh, anyway, so um, what was I saying? I lost, I get missions and I forget what I was doing. What was I saying? What was it? Somebody help me. Said yeah, so, yeah, so, so God's good, which means we don't have time. We don't have the luxury just to lay back and slumber. Those days are over, church. Well, years. And this is not to scare you because any man of God that uses the word to scare you, he's not a man of God. Our job is to alert you, to make sure that you are hearing what the Bible says, period. We're far trying to cause you to be feared because fear is not of God. Amen? What is fear? It's false evidence appearing real. So the, the, the prophet, the apostle, he's writing about to the church. Listen, be not deceived, which means especially in the end times, we're gonna. It's gonna. Remember the first, uh, the first sign that, that you see in Luke twenty-one, and you look, you see in Matthew twenty. What's the first sign and first command was? Be alert. Do not be deceived. Very important. So if you if you're watching anybody on TV or you're reading a book, and you start seeing that that's causing you fear, let it go. That's not God. I'm sorry. I don't care how pretty this sounds. But this word of God is to put the fear of God, not to make you afraid. Fear means the, that you respect God. You know, the, when you look at the seven spirits of God, the seventh one was to fear the Lord. And I find that people fall into deception because they, they lose the fear of God in their lives. Mm. 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 When the fear of God is in you, doesn't matter what temptation comes to you. If you walk in the fear of God, you know, you know, why would I break the heart of my Lord? And deception comes in, point in case. What did the serpent do at the garden? He knew what, exactly what to tell Eve so that Eve can give her husband to eat. Because the moment she seen that it was good for the eyes, it was pleasant for the eyes, what perception, what, she, what the devil, the devil took a truth and, and add something to it. He kind of twisted it. And listen, the moment you add something to the truth, it starts being the truth. And so he knew what he knew how to use. He tried it with Jesus. He said, it is written, uh, 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 God, it is written that, 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 that God will send angels. You don't think the Lord knew that? Listen, the devil had the audacity to try to confront the guy that wrote the Bible. <laughs> I mean, that's how much less respect the devil has. You don't think you, you don't think you think the devil respects you? Who used the word of God and twist it to you? Thinking that, and you hear, but that's God's word. Yeah, but how did he present it to you? So he says, you do not be deceived. Now, in this page that I gave you, first, I want to start looking at some of these scriptures. Number one, write this down, this, this, uh, deceive. The word deceive means to be beguiled, to be beguiled. Be, to, let me, you want to help me, Karen? You know, my spanglish is bad. <laughs> Sorry. Beguiled. Beguiled. I'm gonna give you a few. These are great definition. Mm. You want to big it up? Yes, ma'am. You want to play Boston around? Oh, you want to do this? Beguiled. Let's see if there's You're gonna spell it too to make sure. You tell him, Rick. You tell him. You tell him, Rick. Help me. Take it. I want you to go to Galatians chapter 3. You don't see this in the list, but I want you to go to Galatians chapter, thank you, Lord, chapter 3. Remember, the, these epistles were meant for the church. This is this is Paul. I love Paul because Paul always addressed the church. Talking about being beguiled. This is uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, <laughs> who has been with you, who has beguiled you, that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among yours, uh, you as crucified. Interesting. He saw in the church of Jesus Christ in the, in, in the church on Gal Gal Galata that they were, uh, what happened to you? You were doing so great. All of a sudden, bang, something happened. And he called them foolish. A person that is self-deceived is nothing but a fool. I'm going to show you to my scripture. You act like a fool when you walk in deception. You're going to see the best. I didn't write this up. The Lord wrote this up. Don't leave. I got more stuff for you. 
Oh, come on, no. come on. <laughs> I'll write your notes down on my Well, you can. Okay. Number two, number two, definition for, this is not the Webster, this is the Greek dictionary, okay? So, to, to, to cause to stray, to cause to stray. For example, you went one way, all of a sudden you end up going this way. Because you were, you were going the right way, but now something happened and you, you, you changed your path. I'm not talking about deception that comes from the pit of hell. I'm talking about self-deception. Very important. The, the utmost worst deception that a believer can have is self, to be self-deceived. And the, you're going to see in scripture, I, found, I, I went and did some homework for you. I went and, and put these in for you so you don't have to be looking at them. You can just mem memorize them all. So, to, to cause to stray, okay, to, to be led away from the truth, to be led away from the truth, hmm, which means that you can, you know, you can be walking the truth, all of a sudden, bang, something lets you stray away from the truth. I love this one. You become a wanderer. You wander, not wander. You wander around. You remember, you remember the, the the Israelites. Remember, I told you that it took God a hundred and twenty years to get the the people of Israel into the Canaan, because even Joshua stopped at the Jordan. It was Judah. So when you see Joshua, you see Moses. Uh, uh, you see um, you see Joshua chapter one. Moses, my servant, is dead. Remember that. And then in Judges chapter 1, you see Joshua, my servant, is dead. Who's going to take my people into the Canaan? They were at the border. When you look at the years that Moses spent 40 years from, because remember, God had prepared the man of God to take him so he can, he can walk with almost 3 million people, is what I was told, according to scholars. So it took God 40 years for Moses, 40 years Moses and Joshua, and then my Joshua by himself. So when Joshua dies, Ju uh, uh, Judah is the one that took him in. So it's interesting how, why? Because they kept, they kept ignoring the, the voice of God. Matter of fact, even the people that were with Moses did not get to even walk in. It was the people, who, it was Joshua's generation because they were deceived. You know, it's, it's always easy. A person, matters on a person that self deceives, man, he buys the goods of the pit. He's always buying the good of the devil. Because once you deceive, baby, he knows how to get you. He'll find many ways to bring deception to your life because now you you become vulnerable. Deception is like a seed is implanted in your mind. The moment that sucker goes in there, it starts giving fruit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because deception can become a filter in your life. It's a way of thinking. Perception. You good? Isn't it the devil that tempts us? Okay, as well. The devil's one of them. Of course, the devil's one of the reasons. It's for ourselves. Well, yes, I'm going to talk about this. Well, he's, he, he can be one of the causes. Because he can throw the steps, for example, mm -hmm. and we're going to see in Scripture many ways how we can be personally deceive ourselves. Without even, listen, some of us are blaming stuff on the devil when there's nothing but our ignorance, our, our, our lack of discipline. I'm sorry, I'm going to give the truth to you. I'm the man of God. Mm -hmm. I have to speak God's word. We, we love to blame the devil for everything. And you know, some, some things, guess what? I told you before, if I go outside and it's snowing and it's raining and I'm, I'm acting, I'm going to put myself as a poor, and I'm acting like a stupid idiot, ignorant, and I go out there with no shirt to show my muscles, which I don't really have. <laughs> and I go out there and I get sick. I blame the devil for that? It was my ignorance, my stupidity, my lack of discipline to know, hey, you know, you got to put clothes on. That's why some of us, we love to blame. Listen, it happened to Adam. When, when God confronted Adam, he right away, no, it was, he didn't blame, he didn't blame, he, he blamed. He said, the woman you gave him, he was blaming God for her falling into the trap. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I had the hands up. Who was it? I'm sorry, yes. Um, I've heard it explained that, that it's both that the enemy studies us mm -hmm. and he sees things in us that we haven't yet recognized in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so he tempts us with that thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we fall and we're like, I never would have thought that I would have fallen into that. That's why James talks about that, that, you know, don't, don't blame God for your temptation. 
Uh, we fought, we, we give in because of our own desires. We have a flesh. Listen, your greatest enemy is not the devil. Colossians tells me that God took him at the cross. He and Colossians, he knelt him to the cross and he made a public spectacle out of the devil. But we like to blame the devil and not take responsibility for, for our, our lack of discipline. You know, we can spend 20 hours watching, you know, playing all these games and whatever to do. But we don't spend time to develop our intimacy with the Lord. We don't. We, we, we want to go to church. Oh, let the pastor preach. I mean, not, okay, see you next week. And we have no walk. We have no, why? Because we have to take responsibility for our own spiritual development. We have to, guys. We have to, yes. But, you, but, but part of this deception is that you don't know yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't know yourself, there's no understanding. Mm -hmm. If you've never fallen into a particular sin before, there's mm -hmm. often a thought that that's not the kind of sin I could ever be lured mm -hmm. to continue because we don't know ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think part of the deception or the way to overcome it is to be very aware that we can all fall into any and all kinds of sin, there is nothing that left to ourselves we're not capable of okay. with the right circumstances. So you said, I am the truth. <laughs> and listen, it's not the truth that sets you free. I'm sorry, guys. When you read that scripture, before you said we got to go before. We, we like to take things out of the context. He said, you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know, hello, uh -huh. But you know, you, you can know that the Bible has told you that your covenant is to be healed. But you don't, that doesn't become, uh, I don't believe in that. That's, the, that's from the Bible days. Healing comes to me. And if that's not revelation, I mean, that's true. But if, but, but if you don't get to understand it and to, and, and to, and to buy and, and receive by faith, you never, you walk like, like a sick dog of rest of your life. It's not the truth. It's the truth that you get to know. Hello. It needs you, and the truth requires you and I to take it, what, what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago, and say, you know, I'm going gonna, I, I, I'm gonna to make myself, I'm going to appropriate myself from what Christ did at the cross. So here we're fighting the devil, and really we don't have to fight the devil. We fight the devil from a point of, a position of, well, let, me, let me take you there, because people get all confused about this. Thank you. But remember, yes, we, we blame the devil, but a lot of the stuff is our own carnal flesh. I'm sorry, our own... Uh, we don't. We we don't tend to. The Bible says, "Those that walk in the Spirit shall now fulfill the desires of the flesh." There was a joke among preachers. The devil, the devil went to heaven. Just many of your people, they blame me for it. I wasn't even there when that happened. But you know, they say I did it. <laughs> and yes, of course, the devil's going to want to knock you out. But the devil said so that person, she, he's on his he's on his own road to destruction. Why should I bother with him? Let me go out to the people that, that have truth in their lives. Because she always the devil, that's why he's called the Antichrist. He comes to oppose everything contrary to God, period. And, and if you and you, if you're not walking the truth, he don't worry about you. Because he already has you. But when you know the truth, he like he, like with Eve, God spoke to Eve and to Adam. He told him, This is what you're gonna do. And, and they heard another, a third voice. And he, he, he diluted what God told them. And because of that, they bought in and they ate. And I go to heaven, I'm going to slap both of them and then ask for forgiveness. Okay, where were we at? We were at, um, where were we at? Wanda. I mean, a wanderer. Yeah. Wanda. Okay, let me show this to you. Let's go to Colossians, because this is important to, to establish, because we're talking about deception, okay? And yes, I'm going to, I don't want you to think, listen, the devil is nothing but a carnivore. He's a liar. Matter of fact, the Bible never calls him a liar. The Bible calls him the father of all lies. That's different. Any lie that you come across, the, the devil is the, the, the origin of that lie. I want you to see this in Colossians chapter 2. What are we talking about that? Colossians chapter 2. Let's go to verse... Uh, Colossians, we're in Colossians. Colossians, 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 like we call our Colossians. Okay, Colossians chapter two. We're gonna do uh, real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah. Let's let's go to verse thirteen. Before want to write this down. This is down in your notes, but it's okay. This is a little extra here to kind of keep you fed here. Okay, so Colossians chapter two. Verse 13, and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, 
having forgiven you all trespasses. Now watch this. Having wiped out the handwritten of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he was he has taken it out on, of the way, having knowledge to the cause. Now watch this verse. This is one point. Having disarmed principalities and power. Hello. If the devil has no power, the only power he has is to lie to you, and he he's as powerful as your alarm to lie to you, to lie to you. And if you don't have the truth, of course, he's going to make a, hand ba a ba banquet out of you. Because it's the truth that, knowing the truth that sets you free. So he's saying here that those, those, those diabol diabolical powers that at one time was in, was in control of people before you won your sin life, no longer because he went to the cross and he nailed them. And, he, and what's he, what it means, he, 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 he removed, he stripped them of their power. And here's the church giving the devil more power than when Christ went to the cross to take it away. But the devil is one thing he knows. He knows how to speak to your brain, to your mind. He knows how to get you to, to be convinced about something different than what God said. So he says, um, and having the psalm, past tense, and having the psalm, the psalm principalities and power, he made a public spectacle out of them, triumphantly over them in it. Now watch this. You know what that means? That's a concept from the, from the armies in the Bible days. What do you think David cut the head of Goliath? They parade in the Bible days when, 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 when uh, Israelites will take over, will, will, take over, uh, will win a war. The, they, they would either have to get up and go after the king. Once they had the king's head, they can go, hey, listen, then everybody would have to bow to them. Yes, you are our king now. Why? Because you overcame our king. Can I tell you, folks, with all respect, that maybe from your previous theology, you don't fight the devil because he's more powerful than you. I'm sorry. That's a life in the pit of hell. You fight him because Christ, I'm gonna I want you to go to Psalms 149. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show you. What, Psalms 149. Why would, you know, this war that we're in, the, yeah, Paul talks about putting the arm of God, but, it, it, but, but, but we're not fighting to win. We already won because Christ went to the cross and stripped him of voice power. But he knows how to lie to you, manipulate you, and get you. So which means if the devil's being is he's being big on you, it's because the devil can only be a devil at the level you let him be a devil, period. If he's a big devil, yeah, he he got you to buy his lies. That's all. You get a report from the law, from, from the metal doctor. Oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, that's your reality. Folks, learn to live by the word of God. Then over your present, separate your present reality from what God speaks. Instead of speaking to the, instead of speaking to God, how big your mountain is, speak to the mountain how big your God is. Let's go to Psalms forty nine, one forty nine. Psalms one forty nine. Let me show it to you. The, the power of praise, very powerful. The power of praise. One forty nine. When you have it, say Amen. amen. So. Here we go. Okay, let's stop them. Praise the Lord. Now, once you see, I want you to see this pattern. Praise the Lord. Sing. It's talking about singing. Sing to the Lord a new song. And it's praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel, let us rejoice in, in let, let us rejoice in our maker. Or let them rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion, that's us, be joyful in their king. Now watch this. Let them praise his name with dance. Let them sing praises to him with the tremble and heart. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Here he goes. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on, uh, on, the, on their beds. Here he goes. Let the high praise of God be high praise of God be on their mouth and as a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron, to execute, and here he goes, on them the, the written judgment, this honor I have all his saints. Every time you get up to, to praise the Lord with your voice and you're singing, you know what you're doing? You're sending a bunch of, of angels to, to what? To, not to fight the devil, 
the, that was defeated at the cross. It's, it's to, it's to, you, you, uh, you know what a bailiff is? Anybody know what a bailiff is? What does the bailiff, the moment the judge does the statement, what does the bailiff do? He grabs the person, come on, or we'll lock you up. Why? Because that's his job. Our job is not to be bailiffs. We execute. We can every time we lift up our voices, and we and Bible says with, with the word of God in their mouth, when we speak, devil, you a liar. You were you 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 uh, you were defeated at the cross. Don't come lie to me. You have no power in my life. I don't care what's going on. You have no power. Why? Because we've been given the power of the Holy Spirit, but also we've been given the power to praise. And every time you praise the Lord, you are inflicting the vengeance. You're taking the sentence at the cross. And remind the devil that he's a defeated for over two thousand years ago. See, it requires this Presbyterian churches after that. Again, we, we have to be taught, church. We've been, we've been, we haven't been taught correctly sometimes. It's sad, but it's the truth. And we over there find the devil. Find the devil what? He was defeated according to Colossians. He was already defeated. His his butt was the question was whipped at the cross. But he'll come back and start putting all kinds of thoughts. And that's why Paul said in 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 uh, in in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 10 4 that we're to cast down. We have to pull down every stronghold, every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it to the obedience of Christ. Other devils got to listen, write this down. The only space the devil can play with you is in the space of your ignorance. He, if he, because it, that, darkness equals ignorance. When the devil keeps you blind, you're ignorant. You don't know what to do. You don't have no, you don't know your, what, what your resources are. You don't know what your, what your powers are. You've been given power by Christ. We're over there blaming the devil for stuff when you know when we have we have a word of listen, we've been given the word of God. The arm of the arm of God to fight, not to fight to, to win. He listen, we're fighting a, a guy that was the he, he was defeated. He, he's like a what they call an a, a next chap. <clears throat> In boxing, you how many people follow boxing? The money, you know where the money is at? When you fight the champ, not the ex champ. Fight the one that's standing with the crown. And his crown was the, was taken from him. His power was taken from him. And it's our job now to use the word of God to execute the sentence that was given to him at the cross. He, he didn't just die for you to forgive your sins. That was the, that's the first thing. That's the baby stuff for God. It was to give you power to live, to, to walk this earth and have dominion like he gave Adam. But we're over there, you know, poor devil. He's like, pray for me, Bishop. Why? Pray yourself. Don't be ignorant. Get, get, go in the Word of God. Learn what the Word of God tells you. You want people to lay hands on it. Listen, I, 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 was, uh, I go to places that people ask me to pray for them. I asked some questions before I pray for them. You know, you want me to bless you? You want me to pray with finances and you haven't tied in a year? I'm sorry. The Bible tells me that you're not there. If you're not tithing, you're nothing but a thief. My Bible tells me you're a thief if you're not tithing. So a question with that. So we are living in the age of grace, correct? Sure. Yeah. So Jesus has already done everything for us. We don't have to do anything to earn it. So how, That's do, correct. how does tithing tie into, because there's nothing we need to do mm -hmm. to enter uh, into heaven. It's our faith. It's our belief. Mm -hmm. How does tithing tie into that? Okay, if you come to my new covenant class, you'll see that. Those are principles. For example, the, the Old Testament talks about, uh, the initiative talks about love thy father and your mother. So what? So you can, what happens? What happens after you love your father and your mother? Long life. Long life. Those are principles. We're not, now we obey because we love the Lord, not because we have to. On the law, we had to know if you don't, like for example, if, 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 if you obey the Lord, the blessing comes. Right or wrong? Right. Paul talked about, Paul took it further. Paul said, now give, you give according to what's in your heart now. You don't need a man to get on the stage and tell her and, and, and rock the boat and spend an hour trying to get your money out of your pocket. There's, there's no need for Now you do things out, out of love for the Lord. These are principles. Even the old covenant is still principle we can go by. But although we're New Testament believers, let's not get for, you cannot interpret the new without having the old. And you cannot interpret the old unless you have the new. You need both. But we are New Testament believers because of the grace, the gospel of grace. I understand that. But now we do it out of love, not because we're forced to do. Okay? We give because we love it. We love God's work. And if you know me, I, I don't beg people for money. I, I do. Um, that trip to Pakistan came out almost 8500 bucks, everything. And I didn't have to sweat anything. The Lord was faithful enough. Bam, 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 put it together. 
and I got my visa the same day I got to the airport. Mm -hmm. when, in the, when I got my, my car parked in the gate of the, of the airport, my visa, I got the visa from, from, from Pakistan, you been approved. It was crazy because I was driving. Lord, you got to do something. I'm a, I took a step of faith. But I knew that God told me to go. See, I know that, that, that the Bible, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give. Hello? That if you give, it comes back to you shaking together. Remember all that? Those, those seven blessings. So there are blessings attached. But now we obey because we love our God, not because we, we're required or we're obligated. The law, what they did was they obligate you. Now we're living grace. Or we can believe God for his word. And let me tell you something. I'm a giver. I'm blessed because I give. The little I get, I give. People know that. I mean, I just, that's my life. Because listen, how can I say I'm made out of the image of God? And the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave. And I'm a cheapskate? If I'm going to follow God's hope DNA, I'm a giver. I'm a, I can give money, my time, my treasure, my advice, my, my resources. Naturally, nobody's going to ask me to do anything. I do it out of the goodness in my heart. Now. Okay, so the devil, yes, he can deceive you. But a lot of times, we, because of our disobedience to certain principles, we break covenant in one respect. Let me tell you what I mean by that. We have a covenant of our lives. Matter of fact, the covenant was made between Father and Jesus. You're going to see it next, next Monday. The, the first, the most, the covenant that really strong, the most of all the covenants is the covenant you're going to see that God did with, this, with his son, Jesus himself. We are benefiting from, from, the, from the obedience of Christ to, 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 because the Bible says that, that he endured the cross, all the suffering, because he knew that at the end there was a price, which is us. He did it for us. He gave his life for us so that we can enjoy. He was son of God, became son of man. So we being son of man can become like son. We can become something, something of God. Not like God, but be, be, not be God, but be like God. So now I have, I have a love affair with the Lord. I know his heart. If I, his, 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 his you know, testament tells me that I can give, I give. I don't have to be forced to give. And Paul said now that if you give, every man should give according to how he purposed. All right, let's work with that. Let's keep going. So, another definition for deception is to be wonder, not wonder. Oh, look at you. You're so good. <laughs> People in deception tend to wander around, go around circles, and you know. Okay, let's go to the uh, first page here on the scriptures. Isaiah, Isaiah, let's do Isaiah, Isaiah 44 20. He feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside, and he cannot deliver himself, nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 18. It's right here in, in the first, on the one, one, two, three, four, five, fifth verse. Let no man deceive himself. He's not speaking about somebody else deceiving. Let you not fall yourself into deception yourself. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you thinks he is wise in this age, he must become foolish so that he may become wise. <laughs> Wait, the Bible said, let the weak say I'm strong. <clears throat> let the poor say I'm rich. Hello? There's no one. Jeremiah 37, 9. Thus say the Lord, do not deceive yourself. Ooh. Turn your sheet here, guys. First page. Do not deceive yourself, saying the Chaldeans will surely go away from us, for they shall not go. James 1.16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother. Go the next page. Is that Deuteronomy? Uh, okay, nice. I got it back. Okay, good. For if, Galatians 6, 3, For if anyone thinks he is something whom, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But prove yourself, doers of the word. My friend, let's go there because that's a very important uh, concept. Let's go to the book of James, chapter one. I'm going to go a few says before so we can we can follow it in its original context. James, I love James. He's a... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James chapter one. Mm -hmm. You know, after he talks about, you know, uh, be you not know, deceived, okay? 
Okay, let's go to verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, this is James 1, 19. So we, we just read, let's read it again. Uh, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Okay, let's go to verse um, 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wraths of men. Now, what's, he's just talking about being not deceived. And he's giving you some cues how easily you can become yourself, so you can deceive yourself. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, here it goes again, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. You mean my soul's not completely saved? Whoa. That's another class in itself. Being in the written means being saved. That you know the word of God is really because the spirit is holy. Your spirit is alive, but your soul, man, your human that not that carnal nature, is can get you in trouble if you, if you don't know how to be, subdue it and live by the spirit. He'll subdue you. And so, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. When you love to hear the word of God and you don't walk it out. You're fooling yourself. But if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, then a doer of the word, this one will be blessed and what he does, the blessing is in walking it, not hearing it. I taught you in Romans, faith come by hearing, remember? Hearing, that those two words are not the same. Hearing is to hear. The second hearing is to understand, to capture what the Lord said. You can read the Bible till the cows come home and never change. Because that has to become rainbow in your spirit, man. And you got, it has to be revealed to you. Okay, so you can look at the mirror and forget how he looks. And keep walking. Mom is like, you know, that's why I, I, I bless God for, for wives. Honey, you better fix the hair because you, why are you talking about you? Yeah. Your wife becomes your mirror. Huh? Don't put that shirt that don't match. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Look. So it's, it's important. It's giving you the mirror. The word of God is like a mirror. It tells you, it tells you where you stand before Christ. Okay? But if you don't practice this, you just listen, 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 listen. And you know you get inflated like a big cow. You oh you you follow you follow the Bible, but not the Word. The Bible is one thing; the Word of God's another. The 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 Word is God, that written book, becoming life to you, becoming rhema to you, and becoming alive. <gasps> that's for me. When I hear a man preaching, that's for me. I take that, I take that for me, and I make it part of my life. So, let's keep going. Of Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah 42 20. For you have only deceived yourself. I mean, there's more to I just took a few, I took 20 something scripture, but there was more. I was, I was trying to save my, uh, my cartridge because <laughs> I've been putting a lot of stuff. Uh, for you have only, you have only deceived yourself. For it is you who send me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us, the Lord your, our God. And whenever, whatever the Lord our God says, tell us, tell us, tell us. So that we will do it. That you have to read the whole chapter. Proverbs 14, 8. The wisdom of the sensible is to understand his will, his way, but the foolish of heart is to see. Here's another one. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. <laughs> if we say that we have no sin. That's another class. We're not deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. That's a whole other ball of wax. Here's John 1, 6. New Testament, new covenant. These are all new covenant scriptures. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Woo. What is, who was to say that? How can you say you love God? You don't love the brother. The, God, the thing you love God, you don't see. You love the brother you do see. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Ho, ho. For whatever men soweth, 
that would be, that would be also read. Hebrews three thirteen, but be, but encourage one another day after day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So when the temptation comes and you give into it, you were tempted out of your own lust, out of your own desires to want to sin. People get that confused a lot. The devil knows. What, and listen, if you have an issue, let's say as an example, let's say you have an issue with hatred. Oh, you, you have a, you, anybody you hate. You just see people, you hate them. Because that's part, that's part of your carnality. That's part of your carnal thing. And every people you see, you, you, you don't find good. You find everything bad, bad, bad in people. You need to if you need to repent from that state, state of living. The Bible tells me you're nothing but a murderer. Under the old covenant, I had to take a knife and kill the person. Under new, if I hate my brother, I'm a murderer. So in my book, the New Testament covenant is higher. Not in the same way we have to fulfill it, but the, the standard is higher because now it's an issue of the heart. I don't have to kill somebody. Just by thinking about it and by hating them, I'm a murderer. Requiring this present from the church. Watch well, this, Mark 14. But the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering and so listen, this is so powerful that the word I don't listen, you can get the most powerful message in your life. But if you don't grab that and you don't put that in your heart and you make sure that you know that you 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 you, you remember the word of God is in what the Hebrews 4 12 says. That the word of God is like it's not a two-edged sword, it's like a two-edged sword. It's talking about the power of a sword, of a double-edged sword. It comes and penetrates and it separates the sons of the flesh from the spirit. So every time you hear the word of God, something's happening to you in your heart. That anger starts. Why, 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 why? What is it? It wasn't that you would that you fasted 20 million times. You allow you allow the power of the word to get inside of you and begin to take some of the stuff out. Because the word of God comes in. It says it comes as dividing asunder. That's the same word uh, uh, to divide, to separate. When Abraham went to cut the, the sacrifice in two pieces. Guys, it's 2.10. Let's take a five-minute break, and we'll continue. Good? Five-minute break. Five, five, cinco minutos, five minutes, okay? <laughs> these, these are supplemental materials. Um, yeah, you do want to take notes on your book, page four sixty three, right? Three sixty three. As part of your package, you're going to get an article my father wrote. David Wilkerson, he, he was good with this. The end times. The loudest scene live. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have Ann today after class send you a link where you see on YouTube he's right. preaching this message. Your dad? Spiritual father, yeah. Live with the grace of the Grace in the Lord. You raised me in the Lord. You know, I remember when I I'd be washing my father's car and uh he's my father because he raised me like a son. And uh, he'll be sometimes crying. He says, you know, because uh, uh, he had issue with the sins of God. And he left him. He says, you know, the Lord, I know the Lord spoke to me about this. And, and I don't know why people can't. He, you know, he'll be, be, you know, I'm watching him now his car because I'm waxing. He, uh, and that's my time for him to spend with him, you know. Nobody had that right but me. I loved it. And so the thing is that he would tell me, my heart is broke. Is why? Because people don't, don't realize that the Lord's setting his alarm. And they would always call him a prophet of doom. Well, today they can't do that. When, when, when you guys, we're going to start the class. I'm sorry. Back to class. I know. You guys love to talk. I know. You can talk after the class and you can I'll, I'll, you give it the room for yourself, okay? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so so he, he was hollered because you know, he would write these letters. How many of you guys uh, will get his letters monthly? 
back in the 80s, 90s. I have he write letters every, every month. And this, these are messages the Lord will give him. And people, and then from there he wrote his books. And so, you know, the Lord will give him about, you know, a, you know, be a watchman in the wall. He never liked to be called prophet. He said, I'm no one but a watchman in the wall. I'm seeing the, the storm coming and it's important. You know, uh, Paul Jackson also said the same thing. The, the storm that's coming to, to America. And we set back. We, we back, went back and like nothing was going to happen. You know, and what happened to them, when you look at the condition of our country, it's very sad. Can you agree to that? Wow. We have to pray for our country. Yourself, Listen, I love Trump and I pray, I pray he gets elected. Amen. But let me tell you something, but besides that, the one that's going to fix this country is not Trump. Or not. He can do but so much. But it's going to be the Lord. When the church gets in the knee, when the church gets in the knee and believes God that changes can come, and remember, judgment comes first to the house of God before it comes to the world. So I want you to take that, okay? The other thing is I gave you a summary. Um, we found it. Oh. Give me one of those. You should have one of these. That's in your book. Yeah, but I did it on purpose. But this is, it's like a guy you can... Um. If you notice, we've done six churches, okay? And if you want a summary about exactly what was the what was the rebuke that, that Jesus gave each church. Remember the Bible says the father who loves his son, what does he do? He doesn't punish it. He corrects. People get that wrong. He disciplines, he corrects. You know, you can you know your kid wants your kid wants to wants to keep for the car. He's only 13 years old. And he goes, takes the car. Oh, I love you. Yeah, but if you love me, so listen, baby, when you when you finish your school, I did that my daughter. In fact, she's going to go take her things, uh, her test tomorrow. She's 18 years old. I said, when you finish school, then we'll talk about your license and we'll talk about getting your, getting your car. And, you know, she at the beginning, but she said, Daddy, now I understand why you made me wait. Because, you know, school was, you know, she was having some issues with school and I said, you know, what's, why will you ignore school and put your focus on, on getting because you want to see your friends drive a car to high school? Forget that. Those people don't pay you. I said, those people don't pay your bills. Die to the parents of self, to people, and just, you know, live the way you're supposed to live. And so she finally, she, I took her to take the test. And uh, what's it? Today's uh, what, Thursday? Thursday. On Monday. And she failed. Oh. So I got to, okay, I'll take her daddy, take her to her. So keep keep me in prayer. <laughs> but listen, folks, this is a summary of all. Listen, there, there, remember we said that the, uh, uh, there was a description of Christ. There was the commendation from Christ for every church. There was a rebuke certain times. There was an exhortation. There was a warning, and there was a promise as well. Because he came to bring correction. A pastor that doesn't correct his sheep is nothing but a hireling. Because the, my Bible teaches me that the word of God is what? It's like a two-edged sword that comes and, 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 and penetrates to divide a son the flesh and the spirit. So if you got a problem with that, take it up with the author, not with me. That's God's word. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the book of, uh, uh, of Revelation. We're going to finally enter. I know it's going to take, we'll finish, uh, we'll do this today, but we're going to probably end up finishing it next week. I love to take my time. You can't. Really? We have Last that. year, we, 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 <laughs> listen, we did a study for one year. We, don't, we only lost one or two persons from you the whole group. Chapter two, they moved. About, what, three know. months? <laughs> listen, we did the book and the whole, remember the Holy Spirit? Matter of fact, yeah. that was printed in Pakistan. I printed a thousand copies. They got it now. Oh, by the way, we'll put our, our school starts this weekend in Peru in the Amazon jungle. Wow. I can't make it. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm preaching Friday night live through the Zoom, and then Sunday we're going to do this. We're going to do the, the, the ribbon cutting, and then I'm going to preach again. Wow, all the pastors, man. they're all ministers coming out from the jungle. They come in to eat, feed them, and then we're going to give them the word of God. And then we also have the prayer about this. We also have Dominican Republicans after us for mm -hmm. our campus there. Mm -hmm. So the Lord's opening doors. But we're here yeah. busy, you know, praying and believing God. It's just, I'm going to have to get my own jet. I'm just kidding. No, I won't do that. <laughs> Unless we have a pilot here. Okay, so let's let's go to the book of Revelation. 
Uh, let's go to verse. Uh, we're going to start reading. I got a little marked in. My, like, like Jeff said, my page is uh, 1261. <laughs> I don't know what number it is. What is it? You're close. Which chapter? Chapter three. Chapter three. Oh, three. Yeah, chapter three. I tested okay. you. Verse fourteen. Now, question. And listen, just I don't want to embarrass. How many actually read the book of of the chapter three? The last verse four. Is it okay? She and it does what we see in the text. You remind them. All right. You read it too? I read it before. I didn't get in. Well, you're supposed to read it this time before class. But to get it first. Oh, no, 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 no. Smart, smarty pants. Look at this, smarty pants. I love it. Okay, let's read this real quick. Listen, guys, this is the last church member. Every church represents a spirit, an attitude, a lifestyle that when you start looking at it from that context, that's the condition of our church in America today, in the world. If it's not one thing, it's the other. So, Let's go to verse 14. That's what God's word says to us today. And the angel of the church of Laodicea writes, these things, look, underline that, plural, not just one thing, these things. These things says, uh, says the amen, hallelujah, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know, again, he did the same thing. I know your works. Don't tell me that your works are not important. You don't do works because you want to get saved. That's, uh, that's old school technology. To theology. Because you're saved, you can do works now. Amen. But not to earn your salvation. A peach? Yeah. So, I know your works. That's why Hebrews 6.10 says what? God will not forget the labor of love that you and I have done unto the saints. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. There's a book written about you. There's a book written. You have a policy named God. He's writing a book in all of us. About words, what do you think the Bible says that that every we will be judged by every idle word spoken out of our mouth? Idle words. So I know your works. I want that you're neither cold nor hot. <laughs> I wish that you were cold or hot. What is the problem with that? Real quick, just before I go on. What do you think is the issue when you have what's the bad thing about having, you know, in between cold and not hot? What's, it doesn't matter. What? It doesn't matter. It's like whatever. It's an uncommittal stance. Nobody knows what you're saying. No, no, but, but I'm saying, let's say when you drink something, for example, a, a speaker, the worst thing you can do give a speaker is a, is a cold bottle of water. Yeah. Because it numbs their court. Right. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, don't ever give your pastor, our pastor, a, a cold bottle because you're going to kill him. I mean, kill the court. What happened when you give him to my heart? Think about it. Or when you give them something, when you give them cold water, and it's cold out there. Certain things are determined upon con the conditions that you that that they that, that are, are there at the moment. When it's cold, when it's when it's cold, like two degrees, some people do. Some people are what they call. I call them. You know, they they're cold in nature. You ever seen people live in Alaska? It's like it's normal. I'm from the Caribbean. I go there. I have to put five coats on. <laughs> But then they come over here and they complain because it's not hot, it's cool here. I'm, yeah. So uh, these conditions, of course, the hot water does something. The hot water is better to wash clothes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys, why? why? Because it's got some power in, what we, in helping with the stain. I mean, you tell me, ladies, <laughs> why do you use hot water when you start washing? We're supposed to do wash? You're missing Mosadi's bands. I beg your pardon, madam. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on, you, you, you guys, your housewives. Listen, I take my clothes. Okay, guys. Yes. Come on, come on. Listen up, guys. You see what you started, Karen? See what you started, Karen? I'm going to sit you in the back, okay? I uh, didn't expect that from you. Right? you know, that was... No, no, no. You listen, didn't listen. expect that from you. Okay. Listen, okay. Come on. Go, go ahead, Helen. Hot water uh, activates the soap better, the cleansing agent. Mm, you hear that? Compared to cold water. And now, what happens when people rinse clothes? What do they use cold water when you rinse? Isn't that true? She don't know about housekeeping. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> go ahead, Rick. I always interpret this to mean that they were neither... For the Lord or against the belt. Well, we're going there, but I'm talking about the. I want to bring the physical sense. Why? Because there's a. See, that city was known for a specific water stream. 
I'm going somewhere, so that's why. But you're right, that, that, that's in the spiritual conversation. But I'm talking about the natural. You know, why Why do you? Why do people drink, people, what happens when you drink chocolate with cold water? Yeah. That's, yeah, it doesn't mix, yeah. Very easily. But you use hot water, man, it's hot, right? People now, unfortunately, well, now I should say that, but people have the, the thing about the cold coffee now. That's the new lesson style now. People, we're not, well, nowadays, we have no cold coffee. What's that? But I don't know. But today's generation, they like the cold coffee. But ice and ice coffee. You go to McDonald's and, by the way, how many, ice how many? Coffee. Huh? Yeah, ice coffee. Then between, hot, but watch it. When it comes to tea, tea is one thing that blends with hot or with cold water. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue with this church so you know Rema, you're going to see they were self-deceived and a person that's self-deceived doesn't have a standing a standing with God they don't know where they stand with God one day they're here and tomorrow they're over there and one day you see hallelujah yeah, yeah. they'll talk 20 million tongues to you and then next day you see them like they're hold on what happened with that victory you were celebrating I, 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 I. you held that because it's, it's an issue of the heart and internal qualities so he talks to this church, and we're going to go to the background of this church. But he tells me, you know, one of the things that I have against you, that your lifestyle is so unstable with me. Because people that are lukewarm, and this was this church, what they call, was, it's called the lukewarm church. And people that are self-deceived, when you look at their actions, you look at their works, you can tell. He ties them being hot or cold according to their works now. The, and, the, and the works here, not talking about also about just about the about the works like you know mission work. It's talking about the way you walk with the, with the Lord. But to believe the Lord is, is to do His works. Hello, you're standing and believing in God. How how much you know? Pe people get reports every day from whatever medical medical reports, and they're very very challenging. You know, you get news that you you gonna get divorced or or you are gonna lose your job, and all of a sudden, like, you know, in in the middle of the of the crisis. In the middle of the t of the actual battle is when you start seeing who you really are. It's easy to jump up and down when everything is nice and the bank account is full, everything is nice and dandy. But then when when your bank account gets empty, you, you, your faith starts coming out. What? How much faith do you have? It, it becomes it becomes self-expressed. Why? Because in the middle of the, of the test of testing, I, I said to somebody, uh, a faith that's not been tested is a weak faith. A faith that's not been, every faith has to be tested. <laughs> and it's tested in the hour, not when things are pretty, but when things are pretty bad. When you don't know what to do, when you know you got these things going on in your life, and, uh, and then you, you forget that you have a God that you serve that's not only you, but he knows what's going on in your life before it even have He knew before it was gonna happen. But David said, my life is, my, my times are in your hands, Lord. My life is in your hands. So everything that can go wrong in your life, guess what? God already knew it. God already foreseen it in your life. And the problem is that when, when things get bad, we tend to kind of wonder, well, you know, where's God? Where's God? What happened to this God as earth? And God's right there holding us, carrying us. What's the thing about the footprints? Remember the footprints? You walked and you could... And sometimes, you know, a uh, 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 crisis can come knocking at our door. And why is this important? Because this, there's going to be some stuff going down this year. Mm. I'm telling you, this is the time to buckle up in the spirit, get your walk strong, strong with the Lord, because we're going to be tested. Because a, 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 a faith that's not tested is not really a faith. It's risk. Let's keep reading. It says that you are neither cold nor hot, and I'm going to explain what, you, what Rick was saying. I could wish you were you. I, I could wish. See, the problem with lukewarm, either you know what the Bible says in James that a double-minded man is what, and he should not expect to receive what, nada from the Lord. There is something for the Lord that when a, a person is in between two waters, remember the prophet. How long will, will you reason among two opinions? But the prophet Elijah told the people of God, you go one day, you say yes, tomorrow you say no, and today you want to be hot, and tomorrow you want to be cold. That's not, that's not, he, he said, yeah, I'd rather have you either hot or cold, but lukewarm, no bueno. So you neighbor, no bueno. No. Whatever, no bueno. No bueno, no bueno, no bueno, no good. 
matter of fact, this is the reason why this particular church, the Bible says he's, he's gonna he's gonna spit on you. He's gonna spit you out. That's one of the message there. It's sad that here you're doing all these works for the Lord, but check your condition of your heart. <laughs> this is about the heart, folks. All this external thing is about the heart. Here's the church, here's the church. Remember, he's writing to the church, the believers. Believers that know the Lord, not heathens. These are people that know the Lord. He tells them, I have a thing against you. But you're not either hot or cold, but you, you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You're in a condition that it, it changes. You know, if, if the, you know, if you put water outside and let it, then the sun comes. And what happens with the sun? It heats up. It gets hot, right? Now, you put that same bucket of water in, in the state of Pennsylvania, or it's sometime or New York, it's like, what, 10 below, whatever. That same water that was nice and hot before becomes ice. It's very, it's, water is very, it's a, it's a variable condition. It can be hot, it can be cold, but never, never, never stable. And so here's a church that are people that are lukewarm are people that really don't know, they don't really know their place in, in, in the Lord. Because they only knew, they only knew what God asked for. You know, listen, Moses was here. He's a good guy. God speaks to Moses. He's the general. He's the general of the faith. He tells, don't speak to the rock. And what does he do? Yes. Because of the pressure of the people. He's the guy. He allowed the people to put pressure on him. And he goes and he kicks. He hits the rock. Why? He didn't know how to control people's opinion of all his life. What, what was Saul's problem? Saul was called by God. I mean, was, you know, he, he was anointed as king. And the thing with Saul that the Bible says that and according to the law, uh, um, uh, kings were not allowed to do sacrifices. It was the priest's job, not the king. But people started putting pressure. Well, he, Sam is not coming. He, i got to do it because people are waiting, you know, and I'm the king of this place. And he goes and takes and does a sacrifice that he was not allowed by law to do it. Why? He didn't have no, he didn't have his, his character under control by the by the Lord, so he gave in. He gave in to the opinion of people over the opinion of what God said. Samuel said, "Wait till I come back. When I come back, that was the biggest test of his kingdom." And what did he do? He lost the kingdom because of being lukewarm. Not you listen when you know in God, when you know where you stand in the Lord, nothing will move you. Nothing. No matter if it's a trial, if it's a bad report, or if it's a bank account that's empty, that's it, it, it cannot move you. Psalms 1, that the one that follows the counsel of the Lord is like a tree planted by what? And what happens? It gets fruit in the midst of the, wa of the water. Why? He knows his identity. People that are lukewarm don't know their identity in God. They question because they don't know. They haven't come across that place in the life where they can say, you know what? I know my God. I know that when that thing comes against it. And let me tell you something. These are times to repair the church. We have to repair the church. We have to because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some. Um, yes, we're going to have. Hopefully, we, we believe that Trump is going to win. But I'm sorry. Trump is not our savior. He, he can say probably. He can probably save the economy. If anything, if he can. But there's a lot of other issues we have in our country that. That, listen, the judgment of God comes. Now, listen, God doesn't judge us. We judge ourselves. When we, when, when we break a principle in God's word, okay, when we break it, we don't, we, God don't curse us. We curse ourselves. ourselves. Mm. And the, remember I taught you in the, in the Bible, when the Bible talks about and, and God killed uh, the, 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 uh, these people, it wasn't God killing them. It says it, that, that's a permissive verb, which means God allowed, God permitted it to happen, but he wasn't, he wasn't going to kill the people. People get caught up with that. They, they, they don't stand the God they serve, according to the word of God. Anyway, so it says that you are neither cold or I wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are like what's it, but because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now these are the, these are some tough descriptions, people. What happens when a person vomits? They expel. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Something inside, something and didn't, didn't, what do you call it? Didn't. It's in the breeze of each other. 
You remember what Jesus said? Sorry. That the word, the word, the, word, uh, the fulfilling the word of God is my food. Remember that? He said, uh, because they came, he was hungry. Remember, that was in, in John 4. He was talking to the Samaritan woman. And, you know, she met seven men, not six. So, you know, because the seven was Jesus. She had six men. She had, he was married five times. The one she had six was in her husband. And then she met Jesus. And with the seven, she became perfect in the Lord. And what happened? It just happens. Well, who fed you? No one, because my my, my food is to do the to do the works of God. <laughs> so the fact that God spills it means something happens. You know, like the Bible says that even the death of a righteous is like a sweet savor unto the unto the Lord. You know that when people are believers and they die, it's a fragrance unto the Lord's nostrils. It's not, it's fragrance, something you smell, isn't it? In our lives. It's like a fragrance. Our worship is like a fragrance to go up to the Lord. And for, 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 for this church, to a degree, remember, the, the, these scriptures have to be decoded. You just can't take them literally. They have spiritual significance. But people that are vomit are people that are sick. People are, and Amos, he told people of Israel, you people worship me. You, you praise me with your lips, but your heart, heart is so far away from me. He said, I don't want to sacrifice. They stink to me. Which means that God has an appetite. God has a smell. God, because he, he's a person. He smells. He's got, he hears. He sees. He feels. He touches. He's a, the Lord is a person himself as well. Okay. And it, I think it stirs up. When, when people are in that condition, it stirs up the heart of God. It stirs them up. Oh. That smells, because that's why he's in some way that that's never never knew the Lord. People that know the Lord, that's supposed to know better, but because they don't know whatever they're supposed to learn, they you know the, listen the people that a lot of these people in in Hollywood, especially these artists, these singing singing, they were raised in the church, they were gifted by God, but they took that gift and they perverted it and took it into the world, and today Satan's behind them. <laughs> Being a, a singer himself, musician himself. Music has power, demonic powers, you know it. Yeah. But it's a gift that they can that they and we know we, we can contaminate ourselves. And the problem when we're contaminated and we look walk, everything we, we do doesn't attract. Oh, God loves you. He loves you. Because God's love is unconditional. He's gonna love you anyway. He's gonna love you to, to, to kingdom come. He says that he doesn't want no man to perish, but that they all come to repentance. So his, his mercy is there. His mercy is there. But the fact that you, you're living out, out of your covenant, out of your identity in Christ, you know, it's, just, it's, it's sad when, you know, like imagine you having killed your kids and you, you see they move on and then you see their lives destroyed. You ask yourself, what did I do wrong? You know, uh, they weren't raised. Like my father was a pastor. But you know his, his his church was more important to him than the family. So I started shooting dope when I was twelve years old. Shooting heroin at the age of twelve, because I didn't find my father didn't didn't bless me. He didn't speak to me. He never he never told me he loved me to a day before he died. And I was at his bed, and I also had a bury and do the funeral. Never knew what it was for a father, but you know what? I came to Christ, and he became my father. I had people like Dave Wilkerson he became my father, you know. And so, but again, yet he never told me. He loved me until the day before he passed away. And I bless him. I bless him. I said, Father, Father I'm going to bless you as a minister of the gospel. Listen, go, go, don't stop. He was fighting because, you know, he had 12 kids. And I think he was, half of us went out, half of my brother went serving the Lord. And so he was waiting. I said, Listen, Papi, right now it's about you. You got to go. Because, you know, you're prolonging this process. I come every day, you know. But anyway, the thing is that imagine you as a father. Seeing your children in the condition of men, I didn't raise them like that. Why does he become an alcoholic? I never drank in this house. Or why is he, why is he go why is he a womanizer when I've been faithful to his mother all these years? Why is he a womanizer when he, I didn't teach him that? And I think sometimes the heart of God is broken because he sees people in that condition living. We're living out of the out of the covenant. We're not living according to the to what God put in us. Listen, you were born after the image of God, folks. You have God's DNA inside of you. And if your life is a, is a misery, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. 
Because the devil can only work in the space of what? <coughs> of, of ignorance. If you're ignorant to your covenant, if you're ignorant to your right of your covenant, you keep going on in space. Let's keep going because I want to get to the point of deception. So then because you are not, because you are lukewarm and need to call the heart, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I'm rich. Well, watch this. It's not like people in the villages. Mm -hmm. Not all. Some. I'm sorry. Let me just. Uh, I, because, I'm not always praying though. I'll say, you know what? I just, this, I got to speak with the Lord, so I'm sorry. But when we live in a, in a community that, that the, the spirit of Baal is so prevalent. And yes, I believe God wants to bless his people. I'm not saying that, but you know, you'd be surprised. What do you think has become the, the, the capital of the swinger, swinger state? I don't know about, but I take offense to that, that this is the place where I live. And I believe that this community can change when revival can come and touch people and I say, but this is no, this community is known here for being the number one capital of swingers. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to be a church. Think about this. We're supposed to impact the community where we live at. It's, it's sad to know that people with the community we live in, that's the lifestyle of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it's very, you know, so what is, it, what is it, Jezebel? We talked about one of the one of the one of the churches. She seduces those who are to commit what? Fornication, to fornicate. And you know, you can't have a Jezebel unless 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 there's a bail next to her. Money, the love for money. We live in a community where people where they worship money. They worship their... I, I've been to some houses here, a $2 million house. Oh, my God. So what? In the villages. I mean, people you want. And you can tell by the way they walk that they, their faith is put, put in a cement block than, than Christ the Lord. And they're Christians. Very arrogant people. That's their lifestyle. I mean, you can be rich and still be humble. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, you know, you can still be the richest man in the world. And be meek and be humble. But this is a community where everything is about sex. I'm talking about the villages. Mm -hmm. Not all, but the majority. And about money. Mm -hmm. And this church, once you see this, this church was that same condition. Look what it says. You are rich because you say I'm rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. <laughs> And do not know that you are rich, but in spite of knowing and saying that you're rich, you do not know that you're rich and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. How can they be? How can they be naked when they got money? How can they be poor when they got money? How can they be sick when they got money to get doctors? She think about this. She's referring to to another possession that's not not do with possession with physical possession. It's talking about a spiritual lifestyle here. Keep going here. You do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked. I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire that you may, what's this? That you may be rich. When you buy the riches of God, you become truly rich. Not the mammon of, not the mammon of the earth. People equate their lives by the mammon they have. That's not about, that's not what, what this walk is about. I go to countries where, I mean, I'm so broken. I have my bishop over there, he, he's been like, he's been like a tw working 20 years. He's got 200 churches and he has to borrow a car, borrow a car. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad because the government gave me a, a six man escort with guns. Everywhere I went, they were waiting for me at the hotel. The moment I came down, the moment I went to bed at night. And, if, and you know, I was driving in the government's car with the air condition. And my guy, the one that brought me there, was driving in a car behind me, a beat up car, no air condition. He would have his outfit on. By the time he get to church, it would be all sweating. And I felt so bad. And I said, you know, I'm going to buy this man one day a car. If it's the last thing I do before I die. Because, you know, that, T, let's go to there. Thank you, Lord. We're going to come back. I want you to go to the book of Acts. I want you to see the church of Jesus Christ in action, the way God always meant it. This is the see that there's a this balance here. People think that, well, you know, I got all this money, I got all this possession, and we should have that. I'm not saying we shouldn't have it, but not at the cost of, of, of ruining your spiritual life. Let's go to Acts chapter 
uh, let's see, let's go, yeah, let's go, uh, yeah, let's go to verse, let's go to chapter 2, 40. This is what I call the, uh, the primitive, the first century faith. This is the church of the first century. Verse 40, and this is Acts chapter 2, verse 40. And with many other words, he testified, sort of saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Those who gladly received his word were baptized. The day about, the, and, 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 and that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they, watch this, they continued steadfastly, steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Then fear, watch this, then fear came upon, then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now watch this, now all who believe were together, had all things in common, and sold their possession and goods, and divided of them among all, as if anyone had need. And they continued daily with one according to the temple, breaking bread in the house, house to house, and their food with gladness. And that's something. Which means if a person had two houses and there was a member of the church that was that was homeless or only a, could not afford a house, he said, Listen, baby, here's, I'm giving you this house. If he has three cars and this member of the church, that's the, what the Bible's talking about. They saw what they had, so everybody can everybody have everything common. The rich hang out with I love Book and Tabernacle, Book and Tabernacle. You go there, you see the choir, some of the people that are singing the judges. People that are accountants, uh, 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 Congress people, because they don't care about the fact they're in Christ. We're all one. You know, your possession doesn't define your stature in the kingdom, people. And you, it's easy to allow possessions in life to say, you know, well, look what I've done myself. Okay, and then actually you have accomplished something because you work hard for it. I'm not taking that away from you. But not at the expense that you have all these things, but your spiritual life is, is, in, is in room. You have no walk with God. You don't spend time with God. You're so busy trying to keep, you know, one thing about, I decided to keep my ministry small. Because I have one big four. I've had many ministries before. And I know the bigger they are, the more they're a monster. And you got to feed it. You got to work hard and lose sleep because it's bigger. I said, Lord, I just, just want to make my last, whatever years I'm on the earth, I want to keep the simple, simple, cheap, that everything I can get, I can go to bless people overseas. I don't need a big house. I don't need a bench. I'm with over. You have it, that's fine. But my heart is to go after people, to, to preach the gospel of the kingdom all over the nations. Okay? My poverty is not in, in you know, working to buy a house. I mean, you know, the, the, that's not my ultimate goal. I've had them before. And I've sold them. And I gave the money away because that's how I do. Again, and I did that. I got proof to show that God spoke to me. You know, I sold the ministry property. And they'll say, no, take that money and bless the ministry. I, 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 I gave checks out to local ministries that were, like the food bank was one of them. I gave money to a program in, in, in Brooksville. That was feeding the, I took the van that Jim Volpe wanted me, that we paid 20 grand for cash. And I gave it to a ministry that, that they take food now to people that are elderly in, in Spring Hill. When you see, when, some, when you can't give something up, Okay, when you can't give something up, it's because it has a hold of you. The Lord tells you to give it up, but Lord, you don't understand what. But if you're saying, if, 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 if sometimes, what do you think that the Lord tested Abraham with the son? Just give me your, give me your only son. It was a type of Christ, and right, right when he was about to take the knife and kill it, the angel said, "Stop him." That that's a whole type of Calvary in, in motion. And God will sometimes require us, you know, to lay aside, not to give up your house, but your house should, your living in your house should not be the, the most important thing in your life, folks. Please, that's great to have. If you work it, do it. But don't, don't negligent, don't be negligent with your work with the Lord. Because the problem is your priorities are wrong. Tomorrow, a fire, God forbid, a fire can come and take away the house. The life, you so much a door. And yet, the temple that you should be taking care of is your temple, but you focus on the external part. Let's keep reading. Let's go back to the book of Revelation. Okay, so let's keep going. So, um, I counsel you to buy from me gold, refine as fire, that you may be rich 
and white garments that you have been clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Woohoo! Listen, it's people can tell when you're flaky, when you're flake, when you say one thing and do the opposite, when you're up and down. People tell me to see that. And so he says, listen, that the shame of you may be not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with with now. This is real important because let me show you in, in this in this uh in your book on page 360, right? Look, look on the on 360, I'm sorry. Now they say you see a picture. So look at this. Now they say it's water channel through this dual pipeline. But it carries thick calcium impurities combined with its lukewarm temperature. It will make a visit of vomit. Mm -hmm. The water from that city, when visitors came to drink, ugh, page 363. 363. See, God has a way to speak to us. He'll use natural elements to bring you a significant and tie, to, tie to your spiritual condition. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. When you look at the original word chasten, it's not to beat you up. No. It's to, co to bring correction. That's why the Bible says that I just read you a scripture that your soul is being saved with what? With the engrafted word of God. Every time you get into the word of God, and that David said, I hid your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. It's not up here. It's here where the word of God has to, has to land. I'm gonna I'm gonna break some of this stuff down. I promise you, next next class, because uh, all these verses are just, I mean, it's amazing. Without, because there's all. So, he's talking to the angel of the church, which is the pastor, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's what what would that pastor do? If the because it's for the congregation, but he's talking to the pastor. Mm -hmm. So when the church is already lukewarm in that, we would fault the pastor. Say it again. Okay, so remember. Said, if you have a lukewarm church, are you going to fault the pastor? Well, yes and no. Let me tell you why. But you know, I do want to tell you, and I told you before. What does when a fish rots? What does it? What does it rot at? When a fish gets spoiled, or it starts getting spoiled in the head, the fish always rots at the head. Fish what? Always rot. It rots yeah, in the head. From there, it goes into the whole system. And when you have a flaky church, it's because you have a flaky pastor. When you have a weak church, because you have a weak, you know, which means people become who their pastor because that that a, a father pulls their DNA into you. Whatever way you're getting from God, have his. That's all part of. That's all. That's part of feeding the sheep. And, and transmitting who they are in Christ so that as their children of faith, they can receive. For example, I got a call today from a, one of my guys that came out of prison two, a year and a half ago. He, he was, this guy's Jewish, Jewish and Cuban. And he, he, he killed some, something happened. The thing, he was released, which is a miracle. And this kid was, prompt, was dedicated from birth to the ministry. But he went the wrong way. He went astray. And just today, I got the phone call that he's he's about to get ordained in the church to become the pastor where he's been visiting. <laughs> he's a guy with a criminal record, but the purpose of God was in him. Now, I, I in prison, I visited him for many years and fed him. He came to my class. So again, when when you're giving the honor door, when you give the honor door to a word of God to people, it changes people. For example, when you go to with all respect, you know, and I'm not gonna. You got these secret friendly churches now. You sit there for an hour, make a few, uh, do a few jokes, okay? When people go home, see you next week. No sense of commitment. I'm not, I'm not trying to bash him, but you know what? Something wrong with that picture. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Mm -hmm. If you're eating good strong meat, you'll be a weak Christian. So yes, part of it, we have to blame the leadership, but not all of it. We have to also take our responsibility for and for for our, for our, uh, for our growth and development in the Lord. Okay. It's three o'clock goes. We're gonna go back to this 
because there's a lot of images here that we have to, we have to, there's a reason why the law used so many of these images. They, they, so I tell, at one, you're going to be a two-part class. So please keep reading that, 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 that chapter three again. And um, let's have, uh, Chris, why don't you close on in prayer? Dear Lord, we ask you to be with us today. We ask you to bear fruit to what we heard today. Help us our lives, the way we live, and let us be fruitful for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, guys. We'll see you next.